Ah, oh, look at I'm double fisting. <laughs> look how excited I am. This came out of my oven at home. Have you ever seen a bite or a pull come out of an oven like that? This is unreal. I can never do frozen pizza again. All right guys, it's James at Coolest, and this is my second video in my four part series of my Giordano's at home experience. As you know, I was there a couple weeks ago in Chicago, and my visit at that Giordano's reinvigorated and rejuvenated my love for deep dish pizza. All right, so this is number two. I'm gonna get right to it. I ordered the four different types of pizzas they have available online. They have spinach, cheese, sausage, and pepperoni. This is number two. I'm working my way up in my perceived projection of fondness, okay? So spinach was the one I projected to like the least, so I started there. Today is cheese, what many people consider to be the benchmark to judge all pizzas against each other. And then I'm gonna have sausage tomorrow, and then pepperoni the day after. Am I really gonna do four deep dish pizzas in four days? Well, I don't know, we're gonna find out. All right, so I'm gonna get right to it. Um, my first video is probably gonna be my most dynamic and most comprehensive, okay? That's the one where I went through the unboxing. I went through the directions and things like that. If you're looking for more of a thorough unboxing, I don't wanna say tutorial because this is the first time I've done this. But if you're looking for more of a comprehensive way from start to finish, from the unboxing experience all the way to the end, go check out that video. I'm hungry, I'm famished. Um, it's later in the evening and I'm gonna get to what is my first meal of the day and I can't wait. So I'm gonna do my cheese pizza. I am gonna make a pivot from what I did yesterday though, because if you remember my first video, or actually go take a look at my first video, um, the crust was a little crispy, okay? It was a little crispy. Now the crust on a deep dish pizza has to be crisp and it has to be rigid in order to support the mass of the pizza. Okay, but compared to the experience I had in a restaurant and take home and cook at home is never going to parallel the restaurant experience and I know that. But this was a little crispy. So what I'm gonna do today compared to my first pizza is I'm gonna experiment a little bit. If you read the directions, it says you're supposed to microwave your frozen pizza for six minutes on a thousand watt microwave. And for five minutes, you have a microwave over 1,000 watts, so I did it for five minutes. It also says in fine print that if it is thawed, if your pizza is still thawed, that you microwave it for four minutes. If it's frozen and it's a five minute nuke and it's thawed and it's a four minute nuke, there's not a lot of wiggle room in between. I wanna have, kinda have more of a flexible and foldy dough experience with this pizza, so I'm just gonna put it in the microwave for four minutes and I'm gonna bake it for 35 minutes. The directions call for baking the pizza between 35 and 40 minutes. Last time, I cooked it in the microwave for five minutes and then put it in the oven for about 37 minutes. I'm gonna put this one in the microwave for four minutes and then I'm going to cook it for 35 minutes and we're gonna see if I can't just bring down that crispiness a little bit Still gonna get that crunch, which you associate with a great Chicago deep dish, but let's see if I can't make it a little more flexible and a little more pliable. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna nuke this thing for four minutes, and then we're gonna put it in the oven. Okay, in you go. We're gonna try it for four minutes today. Full power, boom, boom. All right, see you in four minutes. All right, four minutes is up. Let's see what this looks like. It seems to have a softer consistency than yesterday at five minutes. It's more pliable. Yesterday I thawed it for five minutes and it was still a bit more frozen. And today I thawed it for four minutes and it's less frozen. I'm not sure if that has to do with the properties of dry ice because yesterday when I made it, it came directly from the packaging which had dry ice in it. Today, it came directly from my refrigerator. So I'm not sure if it came at a different temperature as to opposed to the temperature it came out of, of my freezer. But I thawed it for four minutes and it's softer and more consistent. So I'm really interested to see how this turns out. So before it goes in the oven for 35 minutes at 325 degrees, we have to put the sauce on and I almost forgot to put the sauce on. In fact, I put it in the oven already and had to reshoot this clip because 
it has what looks to be a ton of sauce on it already. And then I forget, uh, yeah, it's Chicago. It's layered, right? So it's cheese and sauce and cheese and sauce. And, and I don't know how many layers that progresses up to, but I know there are multiple layers of cheese and sauce. And I almost forgot the top layer of sauce. And again, you soak this in water. And again, you soak the sauce in hot water while the pizza is thawing in the microwave for four minutes and conveniently, by the time the pizza is done thawing, the sauce is thawed underneath hot water as well. So, very, very convenient timing there. All right, we're ready to roll. 35 minutes, 325 degrees. Again, I nuked it for one minute less this time. Um, I nuked it for the recommended temperature of the pizza being thawed. Even though it was frozen, I nuked it for four minutes. That's what I recommend for a thawed pizza. I'm gonna try to get it a bit more pliable. Just put it in the oven and see how it turns out. All right, final 30 seconds here. Take a look at that. You can see it bubbling up a little bit right here. So I think that it's cooked nearly to perfection. Typically when you see those bubbles like that, that means that it's the culmination of the pizza's cooking and the temperature is done. So we are uh, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let me go in there and get it out. Ooh, that's a sign of success right there, uh, hopefully. So here we have the pizza right out of the oven at 35 minutes. You see a little bit of moisture. I'm not sure what to think because the pizza yesterday did not do that. But also the pizza yesterday didn't bubble up like this either. Let's see if it's actually cooked and if so, how good it is. All right, so let's cut into this. It doesn't seem like it's cooked. It seems a little soupier than yesterday. You wouldn't tell by looking at it that it's a cheese pizza, but it's cheese. All right, so let me take a quick pull of one slice, and that way if it is undercooked, I can get it back in the oven real quick. Come on. Seems a little soupy. And I'm not sure, that could just be because it's cheese, and when you're in Chicago, that means it is cheese intensive. So let me dig right in. It seems to have the right temperatures wafting. So let's see. Unreal. This came out of my oven at home. Have you ever seen a bite or a pull come out of an oven like that? This is unreal. I can never do frozen pizza again. I mean, just look at the way that this is just oozing and cascading down and it is layered. So the condensation and the water on top must have just been the water transcending through its ingredient layers up to the top and just marinating on top. Ah, oh, look at I'm double fisting. <laughs> look how excited I am. Amazing layering. Again, how, how is this even possible? How is this even coming out of my home oven? I think I nailed it by microwaving it for four minutes instead of five. Wow, can you tell how delicious this is? I'm confident that that minute less in a microwave made all the difference. And physics and chemistry are just amazing studies. How one less minute in the microwave ahead of time compounded with exactly 35 minutes in an oven, both with different types of cooking methods, made this pizza perfect. It's cooked all the way through, it's thorough. Uh, this is a hearty, hearty pizza. This is a two pound pizza. To cook this evenly and thoroughly um, and have it evenly distributed and have a perfect cook in 35 minutes is, or I should say 40 minutes combined is unreal. It just, um, they definitely have it down to a science and I think I've locked it down to a sweet science. I'm looking forward to the sausage one tomorrow. I'm gonna do it the exact same way and see if I can't recreate this masterpiece. Final thoughts, typically not a cheese uh, pizza fanatic, but um, 
how could anyone not like this? If you, if you like pizza and have a problem with this, there's a problem with you <laughs> because this is unreal. And I want to close with this. Um, last night I woke up and it was like in the middle of the night and I went to the refrigerator and I couldn't resist. I saw that Chicago deep dish pizza in my refrigerator and it was a paradigm I've never even experienced before. Opening up the refrigerator and seeing a thick Chicago deep dish pizza leftover was just awesome. It was really, really cool. You know, you're used to seeing your Pizza Hut or your local pizza in there, the box you've seen a million times. And just to go in that refrigerator at night and have a leftover Chicago pizza and be able to take a pull off this or have a slice um, as leftover, it just seemed really, really cool. Um, I'm really glad that Giordano's has been able to recreate the experience of their restaurant and be able to um, transplant it into your house. So I'm gonna finish up this pizza. I'm probably gonna take down these two, uh, save the half for leftovers. And in terms of how it rates against the spinach, there's no comparison. Uh, I'm, not hot, I'm not sure why spinach was even an option. You know, they had um, you know, spinach, cheese, sausage and pepperoni. Maybe spinach is to appease those who are plant-based. Maybe spinach is a new trend in pizza. I'm not aware of, but um, <laughs> for me, cheese pizza is the baseline. It's not the benchmark, it's not the watermark, but it is a baseline, all right? It's a baseline as if the pizza is gonna be good. I don't use it as a litmus test to judge all pizzas against each other because all pizzas are different and all pizza places have different specialties. So to rate one person's cheese against another person's cheese, hey, look, maybe they're good at layering or maybe they're good at uh, toppings or maybe they are just phenomenal at a great cheese pie. Uh, nonetheless, this cheese pizza exponentially trumps the spinach from yesterday. The, 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 the spinach one is an afterthought. It was good. I was able to, to learn from it the way I cooked it, the way I microwaved it. Um, I was able to take away some cooking lessons from it on how to prepare my future Giordano's pizzas, and there will be future. There will be future outside this series. This is happening. I mean, why I don't have a freezer full of these at all times is, uh, is beyond me. That's gonna happen. And I'll tell you one thing, it is super cool. I mean, just think, if you had, a, if you had people over uh, and you're having some, some drinks, or you know, you're playing some pool, or you're entertaining, or you're watching a game and it's late night, and someone says, you know, I want pizza, and you don't call Domino's, and you don't call the local place, you don't throw in a DiGiorno, you go in to your freezer and you pull out one of these, uh, not only is it the ultimate crowd pleaser, I think you're pretty cool. Uh, I'd be impressed, especially after tasting it, because the quality is unreal. Okay, this ends part two, and I'm very much looking forward to part three.